Web World, Scotty D. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday, the weekly series that is of you, for you, by you, and about you. I'm merely your puppet and your servant answering your questions or covering your topics of interest. And if you want to be featured on a future What's Up Wednesday, it's real simple to do so. All you have to do is drop your question or topic of interest to me via email or Twitter. The email account is scott at scottydonline.com or the Twitter account is at scottydonline. Both are in the video description below for easy find and easy use. If I happen to pick you for a future What's Up Wednesday, I'm going to give you a shout out during that video as well as plug and promote your YouTube channel and any other social media link that you are working on or you are involved with because you're proud of it, you want people to know about it, well it will happen right here on What's Up Wednesday. This week's What's Up Wednesday comes by way of email from our good friend in the techertainment community, Jay Shots. What a cool name is that? Jay Shots. And I've got a link to Jay's YouTube channel, Jay's social media and project links all in the video description below. So make sure after you watch this video, you go out, check out Jay's links and show Jay some love. On to Jay's email. Jay writes, I'm looking for an affordable USB mixer with phantom power. Sounds like you're going to be using a studio condenser mic, so we'll cover that. And I also want to know, how does the quality difference work with these compared to each other? Or, or how do I tell if this 24-bit mixer will sound better than the other 24-bit quality mixer? Is there anything higher than 24-bit mixers? Is there a way that I could be able to compare the quality of the mixers to one another? I'm ultimately looking for a pro quality under $300 to around $250. I like the Scarlet Series, Personas, Native Instruments, USB Box, and Akai Pro. M Audio just doesn't seem interesting to me very much. By the way, I noticed you had an Alesis. Thanks. That's quite an email. Let's dive right in and let's talk about this. Let's start with the first part of your email, and that is... How does the quality difference work between two products? How do I compare them? How do I discern which one is better than the other? Uh, and the answer is, unless you have a local music store that has every make and model that you're interested in out on display, plugged in and available for you to sample, it's going to be nearly impossible for you to really truly discern the quality difference from one to another. You're going to be left to the demise of people writing reviews on their purchases online and video product reviews that you might find on YouTube. So it's really going to come down to you um, just taking the chance with the product that you believe in, with the company that you believe in. Um, is there something better than 24-bit out there? Um, most, if not all, of the mixers that I know of, that I've used, or that I know that people are using in their home studios, or even professional studios, are 24-bit. Now, that being said, there are major names and brands out there that are much higher than the a price point that you're looking at spending that have uh, sequencers that have what's known as a 32-bit float point processing, which allows you to take a 24-bit file and uptick it to 32-bit, giving you a little bit more headroom in the digital file itself. Now, that being said, don't get hung up on the bit rate itself. Like I said, almost every mixer that I've ever used or that I know people have actually installed in their studios are 24-bit, and that's plenty of bit rate for what they're doing, be it music recording or even vocal or voiceover work. Um, and, and again, don't get hung up on just the bit rate itself because you've got the bit rate and the sample rate. So don't confuse one from the other because each one of them adds a different element to your recording but uh, just sticking with your interest 24-bit will be just fine for producing music and vocal work and in shopping for the mixer of your choice don't forget you might even run across firewire mixers but just remember that firewire is a technology that is dated and a lot of computer manufacturers are doing away with that technology inside of their computers uh, firewire was very common in old mac systems but it's not even a common native interface on any of the new Mac systems out. So if you do want to go with a FireWire mixer, you're more than likely going to have to go with some sort of a conversion adapter or interface to even be able to connect that FireWire mixer into your... I personally steer clear of FireWire, um, but I just wanted to bring that up that 
in your research, you might run across a couple of those that you think, hmm, I like that one. But just keep in mind that that's a dated technology that's being phased out by a lot of manufacturers. And also, let's define what a mixer is, because you might not even need a mixer for what you're doing. If you're just plugging in a single instrument at a time, maybe just a single mic at a time, maybe a drum machine, uh, you might be able to get away with an audio interface with USB capabilities versus a mixer. So what a mixer is, by definition, is more than one input and the ability to combine those inputs into a common output. Uh, and that all said is depending on your daily average use and what you plan on doing with your device. If you're planning on plugging in multiple instruments at one time, you might need a multi-channel mixer. But like I said, if you're going to go with a single instrument at a time, or if you're really going to be doing more vocal work uh, in tracking on the back end with looping, uh, you might get away with just an interface by itself. Now, you talked about my Alesis Multimix 4, and certainly I mentioned that I really enjoy this device, but it is a basic of basics of mixers. It is about as rudimentary of a mixer as you get. And I'll call it a mixer because it is multi-channel, but it doesn't have any advanced capabilities. But that's okay because I do mainly voiceover work and because of that, I don't need a very complex mixer. This basic mixer suffices all of my current needs and the multi-channels allows me a little bit more advanced functions. I do uh, have the capability of pulling in a Skype call and let people listen in almost like a phone patch, but don't confuse it from a mix minus because it does not have the capability of doing a mix minus on the Alesis Multi Mix 4. You can get this mixer for, uh, I would say, under $100 now. When I bought it, it was right around $100. Uh, so let's go uh, through a few other options. Uh, that I really enjoy. And uh, the first one uh, is the Scarlet 2i2. It's a great USB interface. Um, and you can get this for right around $150. Uh, it is 24-bit uh, rate with sample rates up to 96 kilohertz. Uh, so a very good interface. You can go with the 4i4 and above that. But if you're just looking for a basic interface, the Focusrite Scarlet uh, 2i2 is a great device. And I know a lot of people that have them in their studios. The Personas Audio Box 2x2 is another good option for you you. Um, it typically comes bundled with Studio One, so it's almost a uh, a package deal to get you started. It's also a 24-bit interface, uh, so you can uh, jump out of the box uh, with the Personas uh, 2X2 and uh, get started with the device and the, uh, the Studio One software right out the box. Now, you mentioned native instruments in Akai. I personally don't know anybody that has either one of those devices in their uh, their home studio, so I can't speak on their behalfs um, or my experience with them. But the M Audio, I know you said that it doesn't really strike a fancy with you, but you are potentially looking at them. I know a lot of people that run M audio boxes and you can get these things from well under a hundred dollars to up to the $300 mark that you're looking at capping out at. And these are, um, typically packaged with a pro tools LE and because Pro Tools is such an industry standard, um, a lot of people like the M audio because they get the Pro Tools with it. Um, Again, it's an LE edition, so don't confuse it with the full Pro Tools, uh, but it will get you some proficiencies and experience with the Pro Tools software, typically right out of the box with an M-Audio device. The M-Track is a good one. The M-Track Plus is a good one. Both of these are very capable, basic uh, interfaces, if you will. But if you're wanting to get beyond the basic USB audio interface into a multi-channel mixer with USB capability and more capable functions built into the mixer, a couple of makes and models come to mind. The first one is Behringer. Now, when you hear the name Behringer and you discuss it with people in the industry, you will no doubt get a multi-different camp of people around the Behringer name. Some people say it's junk, some people say it's good, and some people swear by the Behringer name saying, it's great, I love it. 
And I know many people that have this particular mixer in their studios and they are professional working voiceover artists. Um, it is the Behringer Xenix 1204, a very capable mixer for under $300. The next one is from Mackie. Now, I'm a big fan of Mackie. I have the CFX12 mixer and... This particular mixer that I'm going to recommend is the Mackie Pro FX 8 USB. It has a ton of onboard effects and capabilities built into it, some by which might even be an overkill for what you're doing in your studio. It has built on effects, it has uh, a multi band equalizers built into the mixer itself. Almost overkill for most studios because a lot of times you're going to be doing this processing in post not at the actual mixer itself that being said it's a great mixer for under three hundred dollars now if you want to step up into the professional broadcast level of mixers you can get into the allen and heath brand of mixers the xb10 is a great mixer for this but like i said it is a broadcast mixer really meant for broadcast mediums and it has features like a mix minus and other uh, helpful features that allow you to do phone patching uh, but that's much more pricey the Behringer and the Mackie both have aux in and aux out or aux send and receives on their channels so you can still get that mix minus type feature and function and be able to use it for phone patching, Skype calls, uh, be able to have multi um, devices plugged in at once. So both of those, the Behringer and the Mackie are great mixers for your studio. So I hope you found this video useful and helpful in selecting a new audio interface with USB capability or a mixer with USB audio capability for your studio and giving you some ideas and some suggestions around some makes and models that I know that are either being used in the industry by professionals, by friends, or I've experienced myself. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody that you know. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. And if you already are subscribed to this channel, thank you very, very much. And don't forget, if you want to be featured on a future What's Up Wednesday and you want to have your question or topic covered, it's real simple to do so. All you have to do is drop me an email with your question or topic, or you can tweet me with your question or topic. The email address is scott at scottydonline.com and the Twitter account is at scottydonline. Both are in the video description below. Until the next What's Up Wednesday, we'll see you next time, web world. I almost forgot. All of the products that I discussed in today's What's Up Wednesday, I've placed them in the link in the video description below so you can easily find them if they are of interest to you. Now, they are my affiliate link. It doesn't cost you any more money to purchase them through my affiliate link, so I would appreciate it if you do buy them. Buy them with my affiliate link so I get the credit for it. It helps support this channel. Thanks for your support, and we'll see you next time, web world.